good afternoon. I'm uh, Congresswoman Betty McCollum, and I want to thank all of you who are joining us here today. Um, those of you who are present and those of you who are watching on Facebook Live. There are just some places in our country that are so unique, so special, that they demand protection so that future generations can experience them. The 1.1 million acres that is the federally designated Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness is exactly that kind of place. Today, I'm honored to stand alongside my colleagues, Representative Francis Rooney of Florida, um, hopefully joining us. He's, they've been doing a markup. Uh, the Natural Resources uh, Committee Chair, Mr. Grijalva, Energy and Mineral Resources Subcommittee Chair, Alan Lowenthal, and my good friend from Minnesota, Congressman Dean Phillips. Representative Fred Upton of Michigan is unable to join us today. But he visited the canoe uh, area and in, uh, in the Boundary Waters as a teenager. And I am grateful for his support in protecting it. We have so many advocates and organizations from Boy Scouts to Girl Scouts, conservationists, anglers, sportsmen, young and old, who have all voiced strong support for this legislation. And that list is available on our website. And you're going to hear from some other people who have been involved in it too shortly. But I'm just going to summarize why we're so excited today. Today we introduced a bipartisan bill, H.R. 5598, the Boundary Waters Wilderness Protection and Pollution Prevention Act, which permanently withdraws 234,000 acres of federal land in the Superior National Forest from sulfite or copper mining. The Boundary Waters is located in the Superior National Forest, and it is the most visited wilderness in the nation the most visited wilderness in the nation, with over 1,000 miles of canoe routes and nearly 2,000 pristine lakes. More than a quarter of a million visitors come from all over the world to enjoy the clean, clear waters and the quiet solitude. But this just isn't Minnesota's treasure. It is the boundary waters, and it belongs to the entire nation, and it is currently under threat from sulfite or copper mining. According to the EPA, this is the most toxic industry in the United States. And that's why the Forest Service had proposed a 20-year withdrawal in December 2016 and denied <coughs> consent to new leases to Twin Metals, Minnesota, a subsidiary, a subsidiary of a Chilean-owned mining company. But in 2019, the Bureau of Land Management restored these canceled and expired <coughs> mineral leases in the Rainy River watershed, posing a great risk to the boundary waters. An economic analysis shows that with near certainty, sulfite ore mining will have a long-term negative effect on the regional economy, putting at risk a vibrant and a thriving outdoor economic uh, engine that creates more than 20,000 jobs, putting all that at risk, and why? Why would it put it at risk? Because the mining would disturb tens of millions of tons of earth one of, in one of the most fragile and vulnerable ecosystems in North America, exposing acid runoff to the boundary waters and into Canada. This pollution puts at risk these pristine waters and treasured forest habitat. And that's why I'm proud to have worked and introduced on this bill. As a Florida Republican, my colleague, Representative Rooney, understands the importance of protecting these special places. I know this because he has long been a champion of preserving the ecological treasures in Florida, whether it's Florida's coastal waters or the Everglades. So I'm going to turn this over with great appreciation for his support of this bill. So Congressman, a few words, please. And thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman. Thank you for what you're doing here. <coughs> I'd like to thank Congressman, McColl Congresswoman McCollum for protecting the Minnesota boundary waters and for all of her strong and consistent environmental leadership. It has been an honor and pleasure to work with her on several different environmental uh, matters uh, in her tenure at the Appropriations Committee. <clears throat> we in Florida, of all political stripes and beliefs, are all united in behind protecting our environment. Like your freshwater lakes and streams, Congresswoman, we care deeply for the health of our saltwater bays and estuaries. We can appreciate what you're trying to accomplish here as a result. 
There are very few environmental treasures in the United States of America, like the Minnesota Boundary Waters, which I canoed a few times uh, years ago, and the Superior National Forest, which may have the most visitors, but if we include snakes <laughs> in our Everglades, snakes and all. And so we, we are united with you to protect these national treasures, and I want to thank you again for your leadership. Thank you. I'm Congressman Alan Lowenthal, and I want to thank all the local defenders of the Boundary Waters who have worked so hard to get us to where we are today. And I want to thank them. I also I'm thanking, want to thank Representative McCollum for her continued leadership on this issue and for introducing this very, very important bill. In 2016, the Obama administration, as we know, found that building a copper sulfide mine on the, on the border of the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness in northern Minnesota could result, or, and I shouldn't say could, would result in extreme and irreparable environmental harm to the region. So that was in 2016 by the Obama administration. The mining leases were appropriately not renewed and they were allowed to expire. In 2018, the Trump administration rolled back the Obama administration's 2016 decision, instead renewing the lease um, for copper and nickel mining outside the Boundary Water Wilderness. Now, why did the Trump administration renew these leases? Even though the science is clear about the environmental and the health impacts linked to copper sulfide mining. Why did they do it? Hmm. Maybe, just maybe, it's because the lease is owned by the same people who are, who are Ivanka Trump and uh, Jared Kushner's Washington, D.C. landlord. Maybe. We just don't know, do we? Anyway, but what we do know is that Representative McCollum did has introduced a bill, the Boundary Waters Wilderness Protection and Pollution Act, that is so important to ensuring that the Boundary Waters, that local residents and visitors do not have to worry about toxic pollution, which is associated with copper sulfide mine. and to my colleagues, uh, both from Minnesota, and most importantly, perhaps, uh, from beyond Minnesota, who find this uh, equally important. Uh, and as evidenced by so many of you here today, uh, the Boundary Waters are a treasured place for Minnesotans, and for all Americans. Hundreds of thousands of people from all around the country uh, and the world uh, have Boundary Waters stories and memories, uh, stories and memories that inspire our collective responsibility to ensure good stewardship of such a remarkable natural resource. And it was uh, wonderful to just visit with Representative Rooney, uh, who went to Camp Lincoln as a kid uh, and enjoyed the Boundary Waters uh, as a young man. Uh, recently, I had the honor of meeting with my constituent, Alex Falconer, who's here today, and his entire family, who came to my office uh, to advocate on behalf of the Boundary Waters. Uh, each of Alex's children shared pictures and stories about their experiences in the wilderness and the memories that they created as a family. Uh, it was a very touching tribute that highlighted the very magic that's created by the BWCA uh, and the wonder that we have to preserve. And that's what protection is all about, not just about the physical place, but the stories, so that our children can share those with their own children and new ones can be created for generations to come. At the same time, my compassion for Minnesota families also extends to Minnesotans who work in and rely on the mining industry. Uh, my friend, Congressman Pete Stauber, represents Northeast Minnesota, and while we do not share the same perspective on this legislation, I want to say that I respect his advocacy for the culture of mining and the economic challenges that face his district. I also want to salute my predecessor, Eric Paulson, a Republican, who made the protection of the Boundary Waters a hallmark of his service here in Congress. But we must defend our public lands and ensure that Minnesota's Boundary Waters can be enjoyed for future generations to come. 
And that's why I'm proud to support this bipartisan bill. I'm proud to support the very people standing and sitting here today. And I'm proud to support every Minnesotan and every American fighting to make these protections finally a reality. Thank you, everybody. We have a couple of other speakers that are going to join us, and I'd like them to come up together right now. And um, I'm going to lead off with someone who came into my office. I'm not going to say I've watched you grow up because I'm not older. <laughs> who, when I said young and old, who has worked tirelessly to protect this national treasure. Please introduce yourself, and thank you so much for all your work and for the group that you put together. Threat of sulfide or copper mining within its watershed. Our organization works to empower and educate youth not only about the looming threat to the boundary waters, but to give young people who love and cherish this American treasure the tools they need to advocate in DC and in their home districts for its permanent protection. I began traveling into the boundary waters when I was just six years old. Part of the beauty of this place and why it remains America's most visited wilderness area is that it is accessible to anyone at any age and any ability. I can promise that its beauty speaks to you at any age as well. And there's nothing like time in the Boundary Waters to instill important values. The ability, to dis excuse me. the ability to disconnect, the beauty of silence, our need for time in nature, and the critical importance of resilience and perseverance. You learn quickly that discomfort is temporary and that hard times pass. And there's no predicting when those hard times might hit. And the importance of all those lessons became very apparent to me in 2014 when at age 13, I was diagnosed with high-risk acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It was my memories and experiences from the wilderness that gave me strength through the very worst days of chemo. So when the Make-A-Wish Foundation contacted me, it was an easy decision to use my wish to protect the Boundary Waters. I contacted the campaign to save the Boundary Waters and used my first break from treatment to travel to DC and begin advocating for the wilderness. That work carried me through nearly four years of daily treatment. When I finally finished chemotherapy, I began thinking about the impact of storytelling. I knew that there were hundreds, even thousands of kids out there with stories just as powerful as mine. And it became critical that I help provide a platform for their voices and passion and stories to be heard as well. We're the ones who are going to be inheriting this mess this mind is allowed to proceed and any other messes that are left behind. And so it is vital that young people know how to be advocates for the things that they believe in. With that thought and a little nudge from a good friend, Kids for the Boundary Waters was born. <laughs> Over the past two years, Kids for the Boundary Waters has brought more than 120 kids from across the United States and from Peru to DC to voice their opposition to lawmakers in more than 100 meetings with elected and appointed officials. Far more impressive than our numbers, though, are the kids themselves, their stories and their willingness, willingness to set aside their fears and speak bravely about what the Boundary Waters means to them, to their families, and to America. There are countless reasons why someone picks up a paddle and heads into the wilderness. Some are seeking adventure, some solitude. Some of us need healing, and some of us just want to catch a big fish. But whatever our individual reason may be, we all come out irrevocably changed, and change for the better. I stand here today knowing that we only have one shot at getting this right. The Boundary Waters is a place like no other. It is deserving of protection, not only for its own sake, but for me, for you, for everyone defending it, and for many generations to come. Um, thank you for supporting HR 5598. Thanks, and it's hard, it's, uh, hard to follow Joseph. Um, I was going to start by thanking the members of Congress here, but I'll start actually by thanking Joseph for really uh, being uh, a real inspiration, I think, to the whole campaign. Um, and of course, I do want to thank Representatives McCollum, uh, Lowenthal, Rooney, and Phillips here today, uh, and everyone else for your leadership and supporting uh, us in protecting the boundary waters of us uh, who, who really care about this place. My name is Drew McConville. I'm uh, the Senior Managing Director for Government Relations with the Wilderness Society. Since 1935, we've been working to protect America's wild public lands. Our public lands are critical to the clean water we drink, the clean air we breathe, provide recreation op opportunities to millions, and a spiritual connection for past, present, and future generations. On, <clears throat> on all of those counts, few places in the world can match the boundary waters. It's America's, as you heard, it's America's most visited wilderness. It's the crown jewel of our public lands. Uh, and as we heard from Joseph, uh, this is not just a refuge for wildlife, this is a refuge for people. Yet the Trump administration has moved aggressively to uh, 
uh, to permit and to allow a foreign mining company to develop a massive copper mine on pu public lands in this fragile, sensitive watershed. <coughs> Left unchallenged, we could see a polluting mine at the doorstep of our most popular wilderness and more mines to follow. I have to ask, if the boundary waters aren't safe from industrial pollution, what is? That's why we're thrilled to see Congresswoman McCollum and a bipartisan group of members introduce legislation to permanently protect this place from mining threats. And just as the House has acted already last year to protect the Grand Canyon, to protect the Arctic Refuge, uh, just last year, the House and the Senate need to pass this legislation, uh, which is so important. But as critical as the Boundary Waters is to Minnesota and its economy, I just want to echo um, the Congresswoman again that this is an issue of national importance. And we all have a responsibility to defend this place for our children and our grandchildren, just as past generations have. So to all of you, I want to thank you for answering the call from Minnesotans uh, and people across the country for leadership. Now it's up to all of us to call on other leaders in Washington to step up and protect this uh, national treasure before it's too late. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Jason Zaborski, and I live and work on the edge of the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. Uh, I own and operate Ely Outfitting Company on Ely's Main Street. Uh, basically, 100% of what we do is outfit uh, people who are traveling by canoe uh, and camping and fishing and exploring uh, the BWCA. I'm constantly amazed by how far people travel to experience the Boundary Waters. In a recent season, we outfitted guests from 45 different states plus the District of Columbia, uh, plus eight foreign countries, uh, all coming to little old Ely, Minnesota, uh, standing on our pine uh, shop floors and getting outfitted uh, for a wilderness adventure. Businesses like mine and many others exist only because the Boundary Waters is so unique, so special. It's a thousand pristine drinking water lakes Dip your cup over the side of the canoe, drink it, real deal. Uh, it's uh, 2,000 remote campsites, it's 1,400 miles of uh, canoe trails. Moose, wolves, black bear, deer, uh, tasty walleye, <laughs> and uh, feisty smallmouth bass, and monster uh, northern pike, and a whole bunch of other critters out there. So. The Boundary Waters is important because of these things, but it must be protected because of its impact on people. The Boundary Waters is unequal in accessibility and value to Americans of all backgrounds and abilities seeking a wilderness experience. And while it attracts tens of thousands of visitors annually, it also attracts new residents and entrepreneurs who want to live and work near this amazing natural place. Because of this, the wilderness has spurred the many rural economic development success stories that dot my community. But sadly, the prospect of risky sulfide ore copper mining on the doorstep of the Boundary Waters puts all of this at risk. I applaud Representative McCollum, uh, the co-sponsors and supporters of HR 5598 for working to safeguard one of this country's greatest natural treasures. Thanks, Jason. My name is Tom Lamer. I'm the executive director of the Save the Boundary Waters campaign. Uh, we have been working for many years to get to this point, and we are so appreciative to be here today uh, talking about this bill. The campaign really gives a voice to 70% of Minnesotans, more than 70% of Minnesotans, who are opposed to this proposed sulfide ore copper mine on the edge of the Boundary Waters. We're giving a voice to people like Jason and Joseph, who not only derive solace from visiting the wilderness, but also derive, derive income and revenue and create jobs uh, for the wilderness. This wilderness place, this special place has created an economy that is worth sustaining and we know that 
if this mine should go forward, it would destroy that economy. It's just critical that we retain this place, especially as our uh, American and our Minnesota population grows you know, every year, and these special places become even more and more important over time. So we're here today really to uh, appreciate the really strong, bold, visionary leadership that we're seeing from uh, Representative McCollum and her colleagues. It's not often that in these uh, contentious days we can find this kind of bipartisan uh, support, but everybody understands the value of the Bounty Water Canoe Area Wilderness. Everybody wants to stand up and support it. And so for that, we thank you all very much for your leadership. Well, you heard it from advocates. You heard that the Boundary Waters has champions. And I thank them for being here today. We must permanently withdraw federal lands from sulfide ore copper mining leases to ensure that this wilderness is protected for generations to come. Protecting the Grand Canyon, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, Bears Ears, and the Grand uh, Staircase National Monuments, they are all important. But just as important, equally important, is protecting the Boundary Waters Canoe Area. I want to, again, thank my colleagues for standing alongside of me today. I want to thank many of you who are, are, who are present uh, watching um, here in this room, as well as the speakers that we had for your help. Together, we will defend the values of conservation. Together, we will leave a legacy for future generations, one we can all be proud of. The Boundary Waters has been a source of adventure for millions of Americans over the years and from people beyond our, our country. It's intact today, however. It's intact today because people said this is a special place and they moved to protect it. And if it's going to be intact for tomorrow, we have to build on those centuries of protections and we must do just that. We must uphold this national treasure. So I'd like to thank my uh, colleagues and for the uh, people who are here today. And we're going to do a quick group picture, even though a couple of people left, because this is a very special day for so many of us. Just so come on up here, everybody. We'll stand in front of the canoe. Okay. <laughs> Bobby on three. Come on, oh, two, my best three. Better <laughs> Facebook Live, a big thank you to my staff. Um,